Hi. For our second lesson on the plate tectonic model, we're going to look at an example of a divergent plate margin. And as in the previous lesson, we're going to look at a new example, one that's a little bit different and perhaps has got a little more to think about than um, the mid-Atlantic uh, divergent margin that we studied at GCSE. For this lesson, we're going to be looking at the Red Sea. You should have uh, a handout to go with this, uh, the Red Sea. Uh, if you have that on paper, uh, it was given out as an A3 sheet. Um, if it's been emailed, there should be a few A4 sheets. Okay, let's have a look at some data. This is a um, fairly basic tectonic map of the Red Sea area. You can see we've got uh, a number of plates coming together. We have the African plate and the uh, Arabian plate. Um, there's also a complex arrangement of things that are going on in the Mediterranean Sea. Let's not worry about those. In the middle of uh, the Red Sea, we have what's been labeled up here as the axial trough. Uh, the valley that we find in the middle of uh, a divergent plate margin. Now, for us to explore this, rather than me uh, tell you all about it, uh, I've set you a series of questions. So what is the tectonic setting here uh, for the Red Sea? You'll see um, there's a whole series of fault scarps in this area. Why are they there? What, um, what's actually going on there? Think about things we've learned um, a little earlier in the course. It might help you. We have a cross section that goes uh, from X to Y to Z, as marked on the map there, um, which goes uh, from Africa through to Arabia, across the, the Red Sea. Okay. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you just to sketch in a graph of what the heat flow at the surface would be like uh, across these areas. Give reasons for your answer, okay? Annotate your graph up. Finally then, we can look at some of the uh, magnetic anomalies in this area. So if we look at uh, this graph, uh, this goes from uh, Y through to Z. So we've got uh, a pattern of magnetic anomalies. Why are they there? Um, how are they distributed? What does this tell us? And also, can we work out uh, the mean rate of opening of the Red Sea? OK. Now would be a good time to press pause and have a go at those questions. Okay, let's see what we've come up with. First question asks you to describe the tectonic setting of the Red Sea. Clearly this is a, an area of crustal tension. This is a place where these two plates are being pulled apart, possibly sitting on top of a mantle plume but we'll look more at uh, plate movement theories a little later on. It is, though, a divergent plate margin. There's new crust being made in this location. As a result, the Red Sea is opening up. It's getting wider. This is the early stages of the formation of a new ocean. Second question, then, as to account for the fault scarps. Now, fault scarps are ridges created by fault movement. If you like, they're the, the upthrow side of a fault. Now, the faults in this area are all going to be normal faults because of this crustal tension, this extension of the crust. What we see as a result is a rift valley. So uh, if we start in the north, the area around the Dead Sea, the Jordan Valley, uh, 
is a rift valley. Uh, the main area of the Red Sea itself is also a rift. This will continue down through eastern Africa to make the East African Rift Valley. What we see as we go further north, up towards the Dead Sea, up towards uh, the Gulf of Suez there, uh, is this northern extension of the divergent margin. These are just going to get wider and wider over geological time. I then ask you to think about the heat flow in this area. If we've got a, a divergent plate margin, it suggests that there's got to be a, a source of heat underneath that um, plate margin, possibly from a mantle plume, um, where heat is rising, causing uh, melting uh, of the mantle lithosphere uh, and getting that material into a rupt out at the surface to make that new oceanic crust. As a result, we'd expect to find the heat flow highest at that plate margin. The two continents either side are much older continental crust. Continental crust is, is going to be colder. So what we'll see from our graph is something that looks a little bit like this. There are no numbers on this graph. It, it's just to give you uh, some idea or to think about what this um, what these results would actually look like. The reasons for this, well, we have this upwelling of heat um, creating this, uh, this volcanic activity on the seabed. I then ask you to look at the um, magnetic anomalies. So if we look at this pattern of magnetic anomalies, we can see, like we saw uh, in the Atlantic, when we were studying those for GCSE, we see a pattern of stripes. These stripes flip from positive uh, or normal fields uh, to a reversed field and back again. This is a result of the changing polarity of the Earth's magnetic field. We've looked at that uh, in the previous section of this course. With the formation of new oceanic crust, when it cools down below the, Mar uh, the Curie temperature, sorry, um, that magnetism will be preserved. So we get the polarity of the field at the time it's created being preserved. It gets formed at that axial trough, and then the older crust gets moved away from that plate margin. So we'll get progressively older crust with this pattern of uh, magnetic stripes. And we always find right in the middle of the trough there, the normal polarity. Now you might have been expecting to see uh, some symmetry in this pattern. But remember here, we're only looking at half of this new ocean. This is only from the trough to the continent. Finally, I ask you to work out the mean rate of opening of the Red Sea over 5 million years. Now, there is a little sting to the tail of this. We do need to be careful with it. We can see that over 5 million years, that there has been 50 kilometers of new oceanic crust created from uh, the axial trough to the continent. That 50 kilometers is 5 million centimeters. So 5 million centimetres in 5 million years is 1 centimetre a year. But the question asks for the rate of opening. What we're seeing here is half of this. So what we need to do is we need to multiply that by 2 because we have opening in both directions from the plate margin. So the answer to this question is 2 centimetres a year. Okay. As we look out of a sunset on the Red Sea, uh, and we think in Arabic there uh, of our conclusions, we can see that the same processes that we've learnt about previously in the Atlantic Ocean are happening at other divergent margins, just like in the Red Sea. 
we can work out through the same periods of reverse polarity uh, and look at dating these rocks, how quickly this happens. We can see as well that the Red Sea gives us um, a model for how oceans are created. How oceans, if you like, uh, start in their earliest stages. The Atlantic is a much more mature ocean. It's been growing for a hundred million years. So the processes then that uh, open oceans now are the same ones that happened in the past. The structure of the oceanic crust that we've looked at in the past, um, uh, in the previous unit in fact, uh, is uniform. Really no matter where we look at the oceanic crust around the world, we're seeing the same ideas, the same patterns. Okay. It does beg the question though about why plates move and that's something we're going to have to look at in the next lesson. I'll see you then.